So yes, the title sounds a bit strange. And uh, actually, I will lecture on um, linear forms and logs, so Baker's uh, theory, and uh, focus on um, applications. And uh, maybe an emblematic application is a um, question of uh, rational approximation to algebraic number. So for instance, Recall that if you have a real number psi, say irrational, then you know by the theory of continued fraction that there are infinitely many rationals x over y. Jan, you're you're a bit too far up, so maybe move the piece your paper down by one or two centimeters. I'm a bit too, uh, yeah, too far up. <laughs> and my screen's not so bad. You mean? Maybe one more line, one, line, one extra line feed. I still can't see the, the top line. Ah. I can see half of it now about. It is very determined because on, no, my, it's good. on my screen is fine. Uh, okay. So. Okay, maybe it's just an, an issue with my screen. So Michael Stoll says it's okay for him too, so. Please continue. Sorry. So um, then there are infinitely many rational x over y, which are close to psi at order two, so, such that psi minus x over y is at most one, one over y square. So but, uh, what happens with um, algebraic numbers? So as you know, there is a famous theorem of Liouville, then that if psi is algebraic of degree D, then there exists C of psi such that psi minus x over y is at least C of, C of psi divided by y to the D for x x over y, so c of psi is positive. So an, an algebraic number of the BD cannot be approximable at an order uh, greater than D than its degree by rationals. And actually, we know more from worlds of uh, Tour, Dyson, Ziegel, etc., culminating with uh, result of Roth which says that for every epsilon positive, there exists C psi epsilon, which is a positive, such that psi minus x over y is at least C psi epsilon over y two plus epsilon for every x over y. So, um, but, so, Disadvantage in Roth result is that this uh, C psi epsilon is ineffective. In the sense that we cannot compute it. We have no, no formula in terms of psi and epsilon for it. While in Uville's result, we have a clean value, explicit value for C of psi. So the question, the important question is when D is at least three, is it possible to improve Liouville's result? So say, maybe to get something smaller than D in the denominator here, in the, the exponent, but still with some effectively computable number at the, the numerator. And this, uh, uh, this question, uh, I mean, under this form, 
was answered by Feldman in 71. And he proved that there exists tau positive, effectively computable, to of xi, c of xi, such that psi minus, if x of y is at least c of xi, y to the d minus tau for all x over y. So tau is positive. So you have an effective improvement upon Liouville's inequality. And that we are very, very far from Roth result. Tau is uh, uh, very small. So the ingredient of the proof is Baker's theory of linear forms in Lux. So I will now give a crash course on this, on this theory. So the goal is to get a lower bound for the distance between one on a product of powers of algebraic numbers. So alpha one, alpha n are algebraic numbers and the exponent bi are, bi are integers. So many problem in Diffantan approximation, Diffantan equation um, can be reduced to expression of this form that we can bound from above and it's then we can say something. First, if we can prove that this expression is non-zero and then we apply Becker theory to get a lower bound and combining the information with the upper bound, then we deduce some, for instance, finiteness of the number of solutions to some Diophantine equation. Okay. So, for instance, in the case where the alpha are rational number, we have this trivial estimate which is at least one of x1 xn to the b it's i put i put one of the denominator where xi capital xi is the maximum of xi y i and capital B is the maximum of the BI. So this is really the trivial estimate. So we'll give nothing interesting in the applications I have in mind. And you see it can be rewritten as log of lambda is minus sum of log xi times log B. Well, I will put two B if all the bi are one. So, um, oh, sorry. Just b times. And um, what gives the Baker theory is precisely the improvement I wrote. So log of lambda is at least minus c of n, so it's effective, so explicit. The product, not the sum, the product of the log of xi and times the logarithm of b. Okay. So what is crucial for applications is to get here something which is little o of capital B. So in most of the applications, it's enough when you get something, if you get something which is little of capital B, but okay. So method gives a 
best possible method. So, log of it. So, I will uh, write this more generally with um, algebraic numbers. And uh, we'll use the veil add. And uh, it's convenient to use uh, modified version like this. So, for instance, you get that uh, h of a rational number is uh, not max pq. When it is written in, in under its reduced form, so what the uh, Baker theory gives under its mean classical form is an inequality of this type. So you have h star alpha one h star alpha n times log n. Okay, where d is the degree of the number field generated by the alpha. And c and d is an explicit constant depending on n on capital D, but I will not, this is not my point. My point is this capital B here, and uh, try now to explain to you that uh, it's it's not enough. So if you <clears throat> if you look, if you are interested in uh, uh, improvement of upon Liouville's inequality, so I call with psi psi minus x or y. What when you the plan is to bound from above the size of solutions of two equations. So size psi one, psi two, psi d are gamma conjugates. And consider this equation so the homogeneous polynomial f of x y you take an integral m and you consider this equation and you want to prove an upper bound for the maximum of x and y in terms of and for this the theory the Becker theory is extremely suitable and there's a connection between the first problem on this one is that can check that psi minus x over y is essentially m over x to the d. Okay, because I be very brief. So, if, so m is fixed and x and y are large. So here you have a product of d terms one will be very small, so psi will be very close to x over y, but the x over y will cannot be close to the to any of the other gamma conjugates of psi. So x minus psi two y will be roughly speaking capital X up to some constant, depending on on the distance between psi and its gamma conjugate. So you end up with this. And if you manage to prove that x is at most n to some power c, 
then you get that psi minus x over y is at least one over x d minus one over c more or less. So there are some constant. So the problem is to bound x from above in terms of. So when you do some algebraic number theory, you end up with a linear form, which is of this form. Okay. This quantity where the alpha one are, and up to alpha n are well, well defined, There's essentially there are units in a suitable number field. Alpha n plus one is also controlled. So the, it's eight is expressed in terms of m. And we can prove that this expression is very small, not zero. And when you use this uh, theory, uh, Baker theory to, uh, to, to bound it from, um, <clears throat> from below. And if you do this, with the estimate I gave you here, or with this estimate. So then you get, and one gets that X is bounded by M uh, log log M. which is good, but uh, it gives obviously an improvement of Liouville's inequality. You can then deduce that psi minus x over y is at least one over y d minus c divided by log log y. I, you have to trust me. But this is not as clean as I, uh, not as a clean result as the one of Feynman I, I gave. So we are not very far, but we need to, to remove this exponent log log n to replace it by C. Or, or there, there is some, the point is that there is one information that we haven't used that here in this linear form, I said that this number alpha one up to alpha n are known control and this one has a, has a large a depending on m. And then it's, its uh, exponent is very small, it's one. And in this particular case, we have an improvement of the theory. And this has been also noticed by Baker in 72, that if Bn is one, then get that's the logarithm of the same quantity okay. of n. And here you have what I like to call B prime is B divided by H star of alpha. So here you have a gain. So B, the application B is large, H of alpha is large too. So this B prime is much smaller than B. So this lower bound is much better than this one. And as a result,
as a result, we get an upper bound like this instead of X. Sorry, Jan, it's me again. So yeah, yeah. great, thanks. Perfect. Yeah, I moved, sorry. Instead of this. So if you say differently, if you if you consider um, irrationality exponent, so what you will give is this result. Roth with this result. Uh, <clears throat> what I call the ir irrationality exponent is just the exponent of y here. We have, uh, so, which measures the order of, of approximation by rationals. And with this upper bound, we cannot deduce anything better than this, but with this one, we can deduce And the point in the, in the secret of the talk, I will try to convince you that, that this situation uh, occurs extremely frequently for a variety of problems, and that we have essentially uh, three results, a trivial one uh, obtained by Uville's inequality or whatever, trivial or easy one. And a best possible one using Roth theorem or the Schmidt subspace theorem. So, so the best possible one is ineffective and the easy one is effective. And then by the use of, UV, of uh, Becker's theory, one can effectively improve the easy one by some small amount, small quantity. And the key for our to get this improvement, so in terms of the exponent, some exponent of approximation, is precisely this refinement here, B prime, called B prime. So I will now describe one uh, uh, another problem with uh, um, of different time of approximation. We'll see that it works uh, essentially in a, in a similar way. Um, and it will be on the fractional parts of power of uh, of algebraic numbers. So here you, I will, I will take three half to see. So double bar mean distance to the nearest integer. So here, you have some easy lower bound, one of the of the denominator, and uh, this has been uh, improved by uh, by Mahler. Fifty seven.
So for n large enough, this is this is at least two to the power minus epsilon n, and uh, for any epsilon positive, you have this result, and it's a consequence of uh, Rydell's theorem, so Piaget plus. The question is, can you get some effective improvement upon the classical, uh, the, the trivial result here? And the answer is yes, it was done by Baker and Coates. Mm. Uh, Jan, um, yeah. well, there's a there was a question in the chat by Dimitri Batsyan. Okay. Maybe um, Dimitri, maybe you can just ask it directly. It was about um, the dependency of the constant in terms of the height and the degree of the algebraic number. So the question is, how small is C of algebraic number in terms of the height and the degree? I guess it's psi in the. For 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 which for 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 which question for for tau tau of I was pro, uh, it was it was in the in the previous slide. You, you said that uh, you, you get the irrational exponent of d minus c of uh, zeta, and I'm wondering how small c of zeta is. Very. It's very small. Right. <laughs> it's very small. Uh, so, the the point, yeah, I I could have said that too. So, um, you mean this slide? Yes, yes, C O Z A. Yes, that the top side, yeah. Oh, so it's tall. Cool. Okay. This is this is very small, but this is a generic result valid for all sides. The point is, in certain cases, there are other methods which give something effective and effective in between 2 and D. But for specific number, for, for instance, if you take uh, integral roots of uh, rational numbers, so I would say this root of A over B, then you can, you can improve this effectively. And even you can get as close as possible to two. But uh, that's uh, yeah. And otherwise, the, the general here? result, this is extremely small. But what about the C at the top of the page? Sorry? What about the C at X is less than M to the C? Uh, it's very big. It's one over tau. Okay, so it's always bigger than log log M in practice. In practice, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. So Baker and Coates improved effectively this, and they proved that there, there is this tau such that 3 over 2 to the n, modulo 1, is at least 2, 1 minus tau n. Well, I put this like this. So tau is positive and it's effective. It's also very small. I think in this case you can put 0 0.9999999999, which has been proved. Right? Remains small. And this is um, using theory of linear forms and logs. And this is. Uh, the Archimedean, the non Archimedean theory. So, what I gave uh, previously is uh, was an, uh, a lower bound for the distance between one and a product of uh, powers of algebraic numbers for the uh, uh, Archimedean absolute value, but you can also consider a periodic absolute value. And um, I will uh, try to explain you rapidly, very rapidly this. So I write a n being the nearest integer 
3 over 2 to the n. And then you define mn, which is 3n minus a n times 2 to the n. And you consider the traded variation of 3n minus mn, which is clearly at least n, because 3n minus mn is divided by 2 to the n. So the traded V2 of something is the highest power of 2 dividing my number. And here with the Baker theory, we have also an, an upper bound. I mean, for the two addict variation, which is a lower bound for the two addict absolute value, of a similar thing. So I take H, which should be H star of three, H star of an N, and log of N, the exponent, divided by H star of MN. So MN and three are integers, so it's simply the log. So if you do this, then you end up that N is bounded from above by some constant divide, depending on log MN. And if you do the things correctly after that, then you get a result like this. I, uh, it's just to illustrate uh, on, a, on an example, the fact that here, if this number is a constant, so you move H star of MN, so you, you get that N divided by H star of MN is less than some constant times the logarithm of N divided by H star of MN. So you get, it implies this. So if you don't have this denominator here, you get only, you have an extra log log MN and not a clean result like this. It's exactly the same thing, but the application here is much simpler. So when you see this result with three half, a natural question is what happens with uh, Xi? If an algebraic number Xi, can you get a similar result? And uh, this is, this is with a new. So what about, so you take Xi and algebraic number, what can be said? on the distance to the nearest integer of psi to the n. So the problem is that for instance, uh, uh, can you prove the same thing? So is it true that psi to the n is always at least two to the power minus epsilon n when n is sufficiently large. And for every psi, it's true for two, three to the n, three over two to the n. Well, of course, you have to assume that psi is not an integer, but that's not the only restriction. You have to assume that psi is not piezo. I recall that the piezo number is an algebraic integer which is real and greater than one on all of whose conjugates are in absolute value strictly less than one. So you have to assume this. And, but you have psi to the end. So you have also to assume that psi to the h is not piezo for an uh, arbitrary integer h. So if psi to the h is not piezo for every integer h is one, 
then psi to the n is greater than this probably. And this was proved by Kavaya and Zanyi in 2004 by means of the Schmidt subspace theorem. So the question then is whether you get some, can get some effective result. Uh, trivial one first, and whether you can improve it also in some way. And actually it's uh, uh, not too difficult not difficult to to prove uh, UV type of lower bound, which is this one. And for some C of Xi, so for some, I will not write it. Uh, explicitly, it depends on the conjugate of psi and uh, uh, leading coefficient of the minor mode defining polynomial of psi. But this is really uh, this is really elementary. I have a, an expression of uh, C of psi, and the point is that also uh, as long as if psi is not a quadratic piezo unit, then you can improve this, then there exists tau positive such that psi to the end is at least C psi minus one minus tau and for every n large enough. And this is explicit. So this is another ex example where you have a best possible result with uh, Schmidt space theorem, um, UV type easy result and some small effective improvement using Baker theory. Uh, here you need to use um, uh, the Archimedean theory and also the non-Archimedean theory to get this. It's not, uh, it's not really difficult. And so um, again, the key for this is this B prime. Okay. So there are also, I will not uh, give uh, all the examples of, uh, of um, exponents of approximation, it works for, for all of them, it works like this. And uh, now I will give a, 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 NASA, a last ap application a NASA, to another question. Which is uh, um, a question on the S part of integers. So the problem is uh, is the following. So you have a set N, which is a uh, infinite. Subset of n. Yeah, so yeah. sorry, um, the, the, the top line again. Great, thank you. Again, yeah, I don't, I'm not careful enough. Sorry. So you take some infinite subset of, uh, of, uh, of the in it, S is a finite set of primes. And as uh, 
is the uh, largest div divisor of n composed of primes from s. Okay. And the question is so n in n bound and s. So for instance, I uh, would say um, consider the primes two and three and uh, the set n composed of uh, integers of the form n and times n plus one and can I bound so the greatest div divisor of n n plus one composed only uh, on the prime I would say two three five okay so of course here also you have an easy bound <laughs> which is n n plus one because well it's unlikely that uh, n and n plus one have only the divisors uh, two, three, five, but why not? Okay, so, so it's obvious. Here, yeah, also, what is interesting is uh, that more generally, I would put with s. So, we write enter this form it's one half plus epsilon so it's for every epsilon positive we have this for every n large enough and again you have you use rough theorem to prove this you one half you cannot do better because uh, as you can uh, you can always take a power of two for n so if you have two in your set S, you take for S for N a power of two. So here the exponent here is one of the degree of the polynomial that you get here. And the question is to have some effective improvement upon this obvious bound. And yes, you can. So there is this tau positive such that N at plus one S is n n plus one, one minus tau for every n large enough. And this is, uh, I think uh, I can uh, sketch the proof uh, very quickly. So it means that, uh, 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 so this is much more general. Uh, so you can replace this by, uh, f of n with f and integral polynomial with binary forms, etc. You have to be uh, you have to be a bit careful, but uh, there's no no difficulties. So the point is that to to prove this, you consider the set L1, Ls of prime numbers, and you write n is some a L1 U1 LS US and plus one is some say A not A1 LS yes. And then what you do is uh, N plus one minus N, N plus one over N is very close to one. So this is you will recognize your linear form. You have your linear form here. 
Okay, the, the exponent here is I sub V I or minus U I. So you apply the, the, the result I, I give to, to, uh, to bound lambda. Here you don't know the height of this element, L1, Ls are fixed. So you are, you are here, the smallness of your lambda, so the logarithms, you have log n. Here, numerical constant depending on this. Then you have the height of a1, a0. The log of the maximum of the exponent, so I would say max ui bg divided by this eight. So, but this maximum is nothing more than essentially log n. So again, you get that log n is bounded from above that's this. So here is, if you prefer, I take the log max a not a one. So that I, one of them is at least n to some power. So either a not or a one or both is n to some power. So you have a saving because the s part of n or n plus one is at least n to the power one minus it's, it's n divided by a naught, say. It's at least n minus n to the power one minus tau. And to have this, this uh, clean result with one minus tau, it's again because of this denominator. Okay. And I will stop here because my time is over and I just put on the archive uh, this morning, uh, survey paper on this uh, subject. So if someone is interested, it should appear tomorrow on the archive. Okay, thank you.